Welcome to Zach D T V, your place for interesting news from around the net. In today's episode, we are going to look at a $2 million prize to perfect personal flight, a new way to generate electricity powered by evaporation, and we're going to wrap up with an AI hologram. That's right, we've taken the first steps towards a hologram assistant. And remember, if you want more interesting news like this seven days a week, click the subscribe button over here so you know when I upload something new. All right, let's get into this. Boeing has teamed up with several large names in aerospace to present us with what they call the Go Fly competition. That's right, they put a $2 million prize on the line to help make personal flight a reality. I mean, personal flight is something we've been dreaming about since we saw birds fly, and Boeing wants to make it a reality. This competition is open to everyone worldwide and will take place in three rounds. The first round is concept presentation. You just need a paper presentation on how your concept will work. You submit these into Boeing, they'll check them out, and they're gonna pick up to 20 winners from the initial pool of applicants. In the second phase, they'll team the competitors up with professionals from the fields, professionals in material design and aerospace and stuff like that, in order to make these concepts a reality, to make working prototypes. And in the third phase of competition, they're actually gonna shoot for flight. Basic rules are you have to be able to travel 20 miles and carry a single person over that distance. Not too bad, they leave it pretty open for interpretation as far as what you wanna use for a fuel source, type of propulsion, and even design of the craft. You can go as small as a personal backpack and all the way up to a motorcycle type experience. They are looking for open cockpit flight though is the basic goal of this. Uh, entrance will be judged on size, sound, how well it flies, and for any groundbreaking technology. There is a list of rules on the GoFly website. I will leave a link to that site down in the description so you can check it out yourself. Personally, I do plan on putting an entry into this and I hope that a few of you will compete as well. It would be neat to see if this can work like the X Prize and really spur some momentum in this field of transportation. And as always, you know I'm gonna be keeping an eye on this, so I'll keep you updated as more information comes out. Next, I'd like to look at a paper put out by researchers at Columbia University. Basically, this paper states that 70% of the United States energy could be produced by evaporation. That's right, we have solar for renewable, we have wind for renewable. They're looking at evaporation for a renewable energy source. And according to Osgur Sahin, He's the author of this paper. He stated that we have the technology to harness energy from wind, water, and the sun. But evaporation is just as powerful. In order to take advantage of this evaporation power, we would have to use one of Sahin's invention. He calls this new material hydra, H-Y-D-R-A. Basically, they're thin, muscle-like structures that expand and contract when they absorb or evaporate water out. You can see these fibers in use in what Sahin calls his evaporation engine. This device uses shutters to control the rate of evaporation to allow these bands to expand and contract, which that motion is then used in turn to power a generator. Here's another example of hydra where it's used to spin a turbine. Now, of course, these are just proof of concept models. They would have to be scaled up to actually produce energy on a national level, but the results are promising. Another bonus to using this kind of energy generation is it would also help to maintain water sources in hot climate where evaporation is a concern. By trapping and recondensing the water after it evaporates, it could help maintain water levels in arid climates. Now, like most inventions I speak about on this channel, there is more research required before they could put this into action. But it would be great to see a fourth renewable resource used for energy production. And finally, researchers at Ventana, working with Satisfy Labs, have merged a hologram and AI AR experience. That's right, this will make for a hologram assistant that can learn what you want. Now, we've all seen these holograms that have been used in different events, sort of like Tupac at Coachella, or there's the guy in France who used one while campaigning for a presidency. Well, basically, up until now, all these holograms have just been recordings of a real person or simulations of a person pre-programmed to act a certain way. What this merger allows is for these holograms to learn and to study the people that they're interacting with. And the uses for this are nearly limitless. You can have stuff as mundane as a hologram working at a help desk, all the way up to a research assistant who can learn the material that's being studied. And as the technology progresses, 
we could possibly even see these things come into our own home. It'd be like your Alexa, but with a face to it. It's a little creepy to think about a holographic AI watching you sleep or something, right? But hey, you can't fight progress, right? So what do you think? Which one of these technologies is going to disrupt our planet the most? Personally, I feel personal flight will be the path of the future. But I'd like to know what you think in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this episode, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. It'll really help my channel grow. I do this five days a week with a live stream on Saturday and a short on Sunday, so I hope to see you here again. And until next time, have fun and be safe.